one, nine, and two. Yeah, one, nine, and two. That is your record for your Chicago Blackhawks after they lose yet again, and this time to the Winnipeg Jets, five to one in Winnipeg. The Hawks continue to put out lines that don't work. You have offensive-minded players, put them together and let it go because it's not a defensive team. Your team does not need to continue to fall. They have been continuing to be the worst team five on five and one of the worst teams in the NHL. If the Coyotes weren't a thing, you will be the worst team in the NHL because this team continues to blow games, not go out in games, or just fall flat and not show up in the first minute of play. Again, because tonight that happened as Deja Vu comes into play like after the first few games of the season where they would fall very quick into games. This team continues to not prove themselves to win. They've won one game, and that was against the Ottawa Senators. And they continue on and on and on every night not to win. Again, the Hawks don't need to continue this. They're now 1-9-2. and two. If they wanted to make the playoffs... I think it's going to be near impossible to dig themselves out of a hole this big from a start of a season. 1-9-2. They've lost every game except for one. And it's ridiculous. Marc-Andre Fleury tonight, probably, again, not the best start for him. He probably would admit that. But he honestly shouldn't be blamed for this game. It was the, the defense... It was coaching decisions and just how this team was playing. I have to say it. Jeremy Colleton has overstayed his welcome in Chicago. I see it from fans. I see it. I've even been saying it now. It's time for a change behind the bench of the Chicago Blackhawks. I don't know how he continues to remain behind the bench because they're one Nine and two after tonight's loss. This team continues to not come out with pressure, cannot come out with high scoring opportunities. This team just falls apart when they go down. It's ridiculous. I don't know what it's going to take to get it through the team's mind to get rid of Jeremy Colleton. He has been horrendous this season his coaching decisions of scratching Dylan Strom so many times when he's an offensive minded player it hasn't helped this team he played today because he Colleton couldn't play Jujar Kara since Kara had to remain in Chicago because he just came off a of COVID protocol just two nights ago if he wasn't on COVID protocol I'm willing to bet Dujar Kara would have been in the lineup again tonight. The Hawks continue to just come out flat, not play. It's just flat out ridiculous. Let's look at the stats of the game. It will show it. In the first period, the Hawks actually outshot the Jets 9-7. But that 9-7 wasn't really worth it because Eric Comrie of the Winnipeg Jets shut the Hawks down. The Hawks couldn't get any opportunities off. They were pretty much one and done and they couldn't move the puck. The seven shots for the Jets had two goals on the first three shots of the game for the Jets. So we go to the second period. It was 5 to 11 in favor for the Winnipeg Jets. Then in the third period, 4 to 15 in favor for the Winnipeg Jets. Total shots on net, 18 to 33 in favor for the Winnipeg Jets. 
The Jets outskated. They put on the afterburners and beat the Hawks multiple times tonight from the neutral zone on into the offensive zone for the Jets. They beat us. They outskated, outworked, outplayed, and outsized the Hawks because it shows faceoff percentage 46.9% to 53.1% in favor for the Winnipeg Jets. Power play, 0 for 2 for your Chicago Blackhawks. Granted, they had a power play goal that was taken away from them. So, 0 for 2. Then 1 for 3 for the Winnipeg Jets. Hits 25 to 24 in favor for the Blackhawks. Granted, I think the Jets probably should have been counted for more because they outplayed the Hawks. Block shots 14 to 14. It was just a joke. The Hawks are a joke right now. They continue to fall apart, continue to just not have any momentum to play. Marc-Andre Fleury, I feel bad for you because this defense tonight was just flat out horrendous. So let's get to the goals of the game because the Jets just outplayed us. They did. 47 seconds into the First period into the game, Paul Stasny scores his fourth of the season, assisted by Andrew Kopp and Nikolai Ehlers. This goal from Stasny led from him getting a chance to come through the neutral zone because Steph Jones was stuck in the neutral zone, leading to the Hawks having one defenseman back, leading to Paul Stasny walking in. And going five hole on Flurry. Jets are up 47 seconds into the game, 1 0. And the Jets are not done yet because at 2.23 in the first period, on the power play, Neil Pionk scores his first of the season, assisted by Kyle Connor and Andrew Cobb. This was a power play that was a set up in the Hawks defensive zone where the Hawks weren't able to get any opportunity to clear it. The Jets cycled and Neil Pionk from the boards just rifles it past Marc-Andre Fleury and the Hawks are now down by two very early into the game. Rough start for the Hawks again, right? Yeah, it continues where the Hawks tried to pressure to get through the neutral zone and into their offensive zone to attack, but the Jets were containing the Hawks. The Hawks get a power play and it goes to the third and to the second period. Hawks on the power play, move it well, get the opportunity, cycling the puck in. Ryan Carpenter in the slot, which I still don't know why he's been on the power play. Granted, uh, Tyler Johnson's been out. Gets on the board. Or shall we think he gets the Hawks on the board? As the Winnipeg Jets challenge the goal that could have brought it within one early, like 30 seconds into the second period, and it was offside. Hawks get the puck into the offensive zone by an offside puck. The Alex Debrinket tried to take it in, and it gets lost off his stick, and it goes off a Jets player into the neutral zone, and the Hawks were already in the offensive zone to attack, and leads to offsides. Hawks still down by two. So the Jets add to the salt in the wound because at 13.48 in the second period, Dominic Tenato scores his first of the season assisted by Andrew Kopp. This makes it a 3-0 game for the Winnipeg Jets. He comes into the offensive zone for the Jets and the Hawks defense Misreads it. Nick Bodan couldn't read it well, and Tenato walks in, goes right in, and shoots it past Marc Andre Fleury. 3 0 Jets, and the Jets add to the wounds again. Two minutes later, at 15 17 in the second period, Kyle Connor scores his eighth of this season, assisted by Nate Schmidt and Agini Svechnikov. 
for a 4 nothing game for the Winnipeg Jets. The Jets get a late power play in this uh, second period. It goes into the third period where they don't do much, but the Hawks do. Because in the third period, at 56 seconds into the third period, McKenzie Inwistle on the shorthanded goal for his second of the season, assisted by Steph Jones and Kirby Dock to get the Hawks on the board. Is it enough? No, because it's our final goal of the game. And so the Hawks are on the board, get a shorthanded goal, and that's it. At 14.07 to end this game, basically, Nikolai Ehlers gets the puck and takes it in and beats Marc-Andre Fleury 5-1 Winnipeg Jets. Hawks lose it again to go down to a record of 1-9-2. Nine, uh, nine I wish it was 9-1-2, but no, it's 1-9-2. We next, our next game is Sunday night against the Nashville Predators. The Hawks better get something going. It needs, honestly, be a coaching change. I, I'm at that point. They need to do it. They need to change coaches for the Chicago Blackhawks. Jeremy Colleton seems like he's overstayed his welcome in Chicago. It's getting ridiculous. You're one nine and two to start the season. Your team should be better than what they are on paper or by the record showing this team has not been able to produce it continues not to produce and we continue to see this same old same old so down in the comments down below i want to hear what your thoughts are on tonight's action by the chicago blackhawks losing to the winnipeg jets and thank you for watching the broadcast please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't done so already and most of all it's time for a change behind the bench, Chicago.